Els podcasts del Mercat de les Flors. Parlem amb Thomas Howard des de Florència, on demà presentarà a Feu, la seva darrera peça. Es retira a la seva habitació d'hotel per descansar i també és la seva oficina improvisada on cada matí aprofita per respondre a mails i altres tasques, com contestar periodistes. En aquest cas ens connectem per videotrucada i parlem una bona estona. Li demano què és el més important de la seva feina com a coreògraf, pedagog i ballarí. Basic thing is the pleasure, the joy of dancing. I think that's something I, I, yeah, I, I like to remind people of more. It is usually more the case because everybody who is taking dance classes, who dances, loves dancing, or at least used to love dancing in the past. And then it sometimes turns out that, but yeah, it, also usually because then uh, then it moves up into the head and there are so many considerations and it, you should do this or do that and and you should not be doing this and that or it's not smart enough to do this or you there is a little bit uh, can, a kind of a inferiority complex because because our culture is the language is so dominant and the yeah the rational mind is so dominant and so on so we always think we have to kind of and that's also the the dance field somehow contemporary dance field somehow adopted this pseudo scientific language with re- well research and and, this, and as if dance research has to be a scientific a science or something or, or it has to be systematic and inside of that people sometimes lose track of why they're dancing or what, what dance could do or so quite often I think when in my class people re- rediscover that ah it's actually fun to, <laughs> fun to dance and and it's a pleasure to yeah to throw yourself in the space and to move everybody we have that as human beings we can do that you don't need the permission to do that you don't need there is not it's not something to be learned it's something everybody knows and then you can learn things about it you can learn certain how certain people did it or certain cultures did it or certain no and uh, those forms but uh, quite often or some people also get into dance well th- because they love dancing but then immediately it's you know you have to learn this and they, as if as if it was something exterior that you have to first appropriate and uh, no you know it already <laughs> you it's just about uh, Thomas Howard, a banda de ser ballarí i coreògraf de renom internacional, té una vessant pedagògica igual d'important amb un mètode propi que sorgeix de la seva pràctica coreogràfica. Com a professor, col·labora amb l'Escola Parts a Brussel·les des que va obrir i imparteix tallers per tot el món. També a Barcelona ha estat rellevant des de les primeres invitacions a Buger, després a l'Institut del Teatre o a la Caldera, on ha deixat una empremta en molts creadors catalans. L'any 2013 és escollit per ser el director de la primera llicenciatura en dansa contemporània de la Universitat d'Arts Escèniques de Lausanne, el que es coneix per la Manufactur. One of the funding principles of that school, the funding ideas of the school is that we're not teaching a particular style, that we're, and how we see technique is more like learning to manage your body and to develop the capacities of your of your body and the also the creative capacity of the body the all the movement possibilities of the body and to steer so that you can create what you want to create so it's not about learning a certain style and it, but just expose the body to lots of different experiences and learn of any experience you put your pod, body through you're learning from it then also you do need time the body needs time also needs repetition also to in order to learn things but yeah not to impose too much uh, of those patterns but uh, more maybe more the learning how to control your body basically and then creatively it's very much yeah opening 
the minds and the bodies to lots of different possibilities. Also, there's a bit the cliche in dance, also that you discover your own dance. And so it's not so much that. I really ask all the students to go into experiences even that they are, feel very far from what they, what they would do personally. So opening all kind of doors to expand their, uh, maybe also what they, what they know, what they, uh, and discover what el how else they could do things. Aquesta rebel·lia, aquest no tancar-se a res ni seguir una sola direcció, o l'interès pels processos pesats en la improvisació que exploren la tensió entre llibertat i constrenyiment, individus i grup, segurament tingui a veure amb la seva pròpia biografia i formació, que d'entrada no va ser gens fàcil. I grew up in the countryside. Um, there was no dance around whatsoever. The, my parents took me to see Holiday on Ice when I was like five years old. And, and then I, I just started dancing by myself and I put on music and danced. And I did that all my childhood, all my adolescence. So I'm kind of self-taught in that way <laughs> or improvisation was my way of dancing until I went to the, a dance school like in Rock. 22 or so. I first studied to be a primary teacher because my parents didn't want me to study dance or theater. But then finally, I, yeah, I, I got my degree and then I called my parents and said, yeah, I, I got into that school and that's what I'm going to do, regardless of what you think. La primera escola de dansa que va trepitjar va ser a Rotterdam i després, l'any 1991, va marxar a Brussel·les per ballar amb la companyia d'en Therese de Kersmecker. També ha col·laborat amb David Zambrano, Goni Hegen i Pierre Droulet. L'any 1998, encara a Brussel·les, va fundar la seva pròpia companyia, Zoo, on s'ha envoltat de ballarins amb els que continua l'experimentació sobre el plaer de moure's i la llibertat de moviments amb un interès particular en els processos basats en la improvisació, en l'ordre i el desordre, en la forma i l'informe. La seva primera peça, Caos in Space, va ser guardonada amb dos premis als rencontres coreogràfics internacionals de Saint Saint-Denis. For that first piece we were working with a book that was called Zoo. It was a little photo book by Brita Yashinsky, a German photographer, and she had made a, a book uh, with black and white photographs from animals in zoos all over the world. Yeah, we were kind of working on very very close to the anatomy or, and also with a lot with improvisations of very kind of uh, intuitive instinctive kind of movement as well and and then the situation in a theater where people come to watch us uh, do these things uh, was a bit the the reason and then uh, well nowadays we should have considered then already uh, the human zoos that are kind of a part of our very dark um, history now in our in the European history where only as much as a hundred years ago where the people from other continents were imported and exposed in human zoos so that we were not aware of that reference that is uh, that I'm not so happy about of course nowadays but um, I hope our naivety from then can count as a kind of an excuse for yeah maybe that that reference that is very un unfortunate and Aquesta animalitat sembla sobrevolar tot el seu sistema creatiu, on els moviments de cada intèrpret no responen a codis exclusivament humans i el dinamisme de tots els intèrprets, en conjunt, conforma un organisme amb entitat pròpia. A la vals, per exemple, sembla que veiem un estol d'ocells. It's true that I'm interested in animals. I look, I watch a lot of uh, nature documentaries, like... Uh, the BBC has amazing nature documentaries and so the 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 fish sometimes also well uh, or dolphins they are not fish they they're mammals no but they also practice kind of swimming together and playing together i and I, I could imagine that they also they also have kind of some kind of sense of rhythm or that that also is part of what they what they're doing but it's hard to know no but uh, but there is certainly a I don't know if they have a aesthetic sense, but I could. I wouldn't be surprised that 
they experience pleasure uh, doing those kind of things. So certainly playing that they they're playing like the puppies uh, of like lion puppies or something or or bear puppies uh, they they uh, they play with each other no they roll over each other they run after each other i think playing is very like physically yeah with the, with the bodies is very close to dancing then dancing for me has a lot to do also with musicality i think some cultures in the world still also don't have two different separate words for the for them where where dance and music is is kind of one thing and i i for me that seems kind of seems very evident that those two things are kind of born together la especialització comporta la diferenciació per a l'altura dels núvols humans plantes i animals formem una mateixa massa There are kind of those basic laws or basic kind of basic uh, relationships that, yeah, that just count for birds as, as much as it counts for us. The thing is with us, we can also move backwards, sideways. We can, uh, uh, and birds somehow can only go forward and fish also, they, <laughs> they go forward. And, and uh, so there we have a little variation as human species, we can, uh, yeah variate our directions and we can turn around ourselves very easily so um, it gives a little bit other possibilities actually la capacitat de girar caminar enrere mirar al passat és el que ens ha fet animals històrics i potser també sigui el que ha facilitat que deixéssim de banda l'entorn que ens acull i del que formem part Afeu, en canvi, és una peça sobre la reconnexió amb la natura. En alemany, afeu significa eura, aquesta planta atrapadora i invasora que cobreix silenciosament els pobles abandonats i es fon amb els murs de les cases. La natura és cultura i tots som animals. The capacities that our bodies have, well, our bodies including our minds, uh, but uh, which which there is another thing that I I would uh, well nowadays also lots of people agree with that but then that was also part of knowing in the history that there was this separation between mind and body that and that that was part of what separated was supposed to be separating us from from the animals <laughs> and now so now we know that this is a this was also a kind of a, a wrong conception of of our being um so but for me it's it's really that um a uh, very concrete approach to what our bodies can do what our anatomies can do what our system nervous system well all the whatever the f- physiology is uh, can can do um and how we, yeah how we can create with with that that's kind of the basic material i i like to work with and uh, the body and with all its movement capacities also reactive capacities and uh, creative capacities but also bodies in relation to each other bodies in relation to gravity but in relation to um, to the space and um, and to time so uh, that's i think that's the kind of the raw material we're working with We shouldn't se- be separate ourselves from nature, no. But and then, but I think it makes makes sense somehow to make this distinction between n- nature and as the as the thing that we are interfering with, no, with our um, with and and that what we're destroying somehow those the e- ecosystems that we're destroying by our actions. Uh, it there somehow that distinction between nature and culture makes sense because there is something that yeah is auto destructive inside inside the nature if we consider ourselves 
as everything as part of the nature, then there's this thing that, yeah, that we are, we are responsible for, that we are somehow triggering by our actions that is destroying them, the nature as well. No? Um, and it's good to be aware that <laughs> that is happening, so that we are, and uh, that we are, mm, yeah, kind of harming ourselves by it, I guess. But uh, com es pot abordar el problema de l'antropocè des de la coreografia? Què pot fer la dansa en aquesta situació? I think what dance can do is that acknowledgement or is that being in the body, no? And I, that's something I really defend very much that because that's our bodies is, is the means of communicating with, yeah, of sensing things or feeling things. And, and um, for too long, we, we thought, yeah, we, everything has to be rational and we can, we can organize and order everything and we can command things trying to shape that world to our what our what we our minds think it has to be somehow and not listening what our bodies are are telling us or also not empathizing with other people know that therefore also we can take power over other people and erase whole uh, continents, the population of whole continents in order to take over things like that the, um, is, I think, is very much us uh, because people were not in their bodies, were not empathizing with those. Yeah, if we would let ourselves be more be animals in that sense, but then smart animals and compassionate animals would have um, led to another course of history, maybe. It's much more complex than that, obviously, and and uh, and we all grow up in in this context. We all carry our history with us, so it, it we are all twisted <laughs> and uh, and uh, in, injured in a way, and and we all are being made to sit still from seven years to eighteen years at school and things like that. No, that, which is not really not. Uh, helping either so uh, so no we are yeah you cannot somehow you cannot es escape it even even as dancers it's not like that but uh, but it's something no it's uh, I think uh, for sure it's not the miracle cure no at least you're busy with the body and you're creating with the body you have to you have to kind of deal with what the sensations and the whatever it produces to you you're you're in contact with other people you're you're in the space you're you're feeling the 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 ground you're feeling <laughs> things like that you know Caos in space futuristic man partout do you believe in gravity són els noms d'algunes de les seves obres que semblen títols d'una col·lecció de ciència ficció i que ens fan pensar en futurs possibles. All the, the those uh, titles you name that actually the all of them have very specific references what like uh, cows in space it's, <laughs> it's the, there the reference is the Muppet show I don't know if you know the Muppet show and they had uh, pigs in space, which was the science fiction <laughs> uh, segment of the Muppet Show, was the pigs in space, and and then well, it has two references, and also Merce Cunningham had a piece called Points in Space. So it was a kind of a uh, yeah, also also combining pop culture and high culture. Uh, um, Futuristiquement Partout, that was a, a little performance I made up last year in a museum in Liège. That was a commission. Um, it's a museum uh, that works with ateliers of uh, psychiatric institutions. Like, uh, um, yeah, uh, so they are all artists who, uh, with, uh, yeah, I guess with a mental handicap. 
you you could say and this this uh, then the commission was yeah some to do something in the museum with in reference to some of the works and i chose one particular work that the artist serge delonay who um was fascinated by yeah by uh, astronomy and uh, or space traveling space the the drawings he made were very much yeah almost science fiction and futuristiquement partout is a phrase that he coined it turned out that he died the day before they launched the um James Webb telescope, that new high, super high precision telescope that is now sending the seeing into space like uh, yeah, never before. So um, yeah, unfortunately, he just missed that. Uh, I mean, he he in his work he talked about the Hubble telescope, and so he that was part of his fascination. And then and then uh, the performance I I used. Uh, the soundtrack of the launch of the James Webb telescope, so the countdown, and then, and then this is the description. També hi ha una fina línia d'humor que creu a les obres de Thomas Howard i que té a veure amb trencar amb les expectatives de qui mira i de qui es mou. Per això cal esborrar els automatismes que han quedat inscrits al cos per la pràctica i la repetició d'uns gestos, ja siguin quotidians o de qualsevol tècnica de dansa. En fer tabula rasa i crear noves connexions apareix l'absurd i de vegades el riure. No és només en la forma o el lloc que ocupa cada ballarí, sinó en l'espai que hi ha entre ells i que forma una estructura que es crea entre tots i que ens trasllada a un altre món de relacions, de materials o d'animals. L'animal que representa Thomas Howard, segons els seus col·laboradors, és l'os. The polar bear was was it was more attributed to me uh, because of, by my colleagues from Zoo uh, when we were working at one of the pictures I I was working with when in the process to Cows in Space was a yeah very beautiful um, photograph um, from that book called Zoo uh, of a polar bear swimming in water. And um, so that and and then somehow I that stuck a little bit and uh, and they, they yeah my colleagues thought polar bear was a good yeah good an or yeah animal do you feel for do me. you feel represented there uh, somehow I I guess I can make links but <laughs> in a way but uh, it's it's also seems seems. Um, what's the word in English? Demesuré, you know, and you see that word, like, yeah, I, I'm definitely not a polar bear. Well, I think that there's something in the movement quality that I, that I guess I tried there and then, and I, I, that the polar bear kind of inspired and that, that, yeah, that is in my body and that, I, but yeah, even though the, I'm, I'm much thinner, but there is something uh, in the, yeah in the movement and maybe also the polar bears are quite um are rather loners <laughs> which is also something i think i uh, yeah if i think of what the kind of the references or the what they what they make me think of it so I, that's also something i think that is corresponds a little bit um Although I like human contact, huh? but uh, but there's yeah, I also need a lot of time on my own. <laughs> 